Uh, good evening to you all. Um, Dr. Behandi Silva, the moderator after for this uh, session. I uh, welcome you all, uh, and especially the resource person, uh, Dr. Anuva Basnayaka, consultant committee physician, for this uh, important event uh, based on nutrition for protection, actually. So this is a very uh, <coughs> uh, a topic that which is uh, very relevant even during the pandemic uh, situation also because now everybody was uh, interested in how uh, this word protection how can we improve our protection like you know uh, protection for as immunity regarding uh, how can you use the nutrition as uh, you know, protection for uh, upgrading immunity so uh, this is a sort of a uh, very recent advancing uh, area in uh, the medical uh, field. So let us join this uh, all informative lecture by Dr. Anuva Basnayaka. Based on this uh, lecture would be based on uh, the food uh, dietary guidelines for Sri Lankans uh, and introduction for health, healthy eating actually. If I want to uh, elaborate a bit about the uh, resource person. Dr. Anuma Basnaika is a community uh, physician attached to um, the nutrition division of the Ministry of Health. And Dr. Anuma Basnaika has uh, uh, acquired the basic degree from Kako uh, Medical University, USSR, and uh, obtained the MSc and MD community medicine from the PGIM, Columbia University, Sri Lanka. And she is a postdoctoral fellow in of the Institute of Public Health, University of Cambridge, UK. So uh, it's going to be an informative, productive session with you, ma'am. I offer you the uh, forum to you for your presentation, ma'am. It's all yours. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. And um, without wasting time, I think, uh, can you all see my uh, screen? I yes, hope you can see. Okay. Now this year we are uh, we have a uh, good evening to everyone. This year we have launched uh, National Nutrition Month on first of December uh, this year because we didn't uh, usually we have it in May or June every year. We uh, make uh, people aware on the nutrition each year with uh, with the uh, Nutrition Month activities. But uh, this year, uh, due to the COVID situation, we didn't have, uh, we couldn't uh, start then. So um, we started, uh, we launched it on uh, 1st of December. And theme for the, uh, this year is nutrition for protection. But uh, when we say protection, uh, we always think that uh, it is only uh, these days, especially we have the COVID um, epidemic and the pandemic. So we th think that is only to protect the, uh, protect us from uh, communicable diseases or the infections. But uh, today uh, we know that there are other epidemics as well, like non-communicable diseases and also mental uh, um, that includes uh, mental health issues as well. Those everything uh, comes under uh, this. Uh, non-communicable diseases and the communicable diseases. And also we know that there are um, issues in our country uh, regarding the nutrition itself, that is malnutrition. Um, when we say malnutrition, it is undernutrition and overnutrition as well as the micronutrient deficiency. So but, uh, to guide our uh, community, uh, or the Sri Lankans, we have, we have the food-based dietary guidelines. When we say uh, about the food-based dietary guidelines, why it is not only the dietary guidelines we have to explain because as um, anyone else, even um, we do not uh, eat uh, nutrients. We always uh, talk about the food. So uh, even for the community, we, know, um, we need to guide them based on the food, not on the uh, nutrients or then just guide that guideline. And I must say at, uh, from the beginning itself that um, these guidelines are intended for healthy adults. So if 
for the health data because we know that uh, there are dietary guidelines uh, uh, based on diseases disease based dietary guidelines but this is for the healthy adults but uh, it uh, can deviate uh, according to the uh, other diseases people have so um, that is why we want to inter, um, uh, we want uh, people to eat healthy so that um, these guidelines are intended for that for the healthy adults uh, to uh, uh, prepare them uh, or to make them aware on the healthy eating and uh, when you see this slide you can see one um, logo the uh, extreme uh, left uh, you can see arogya and healthy life through proper nutrition that is the logo we have introduced for the food based diet guidelines when we revised our guidelines in 2011 we had the last food based diet guideline we have revised in 2020 and we introduced that logo and wherever you see that logo you know that it is the uh, uh, it is uh, about the food based diet guidelines for sri lanka and you can see the qr code i will give this also because uh, you all can make others aware on it at uh, this uh, this qr uh, code is linked to our nutrition division website and you can get more information from uh, from our website and we are um, time to time we are updating that so uh, to, um, that uh, nutrition month theme we said that nutrition for protection and you all said as uh, correctly that uh, we have to protect from infectious diseases we know there are so many pathogens uh, around us and not only the covid but even other thing and also the harmful substances which um, uh, affect the our immune system so um, we always uh, know that uh, nutrition or proper new um, nutrient intake improves our immune system and um, we can uh, fight against the infectious diseases so uh, apart from that and uh, that uh, from the annual health bulletin of the ministry of health we have collected this data and we are, you can see that except for um, chronic uh, respiratory diseases all the other uh, non communicable diseases were uh, somewhat under control from until uh, 2019 but we know that uh, during after covid situation it might uh, get affected and also most of the people who had non communicable diseases um, um, also affected by the covid pandemic so uh, we we have to protect from the non communicable diseases as well for so that we need to um, as uh, to healthy uh, diets and also healthy lifestyle to prevent them so uh, i think thing what i said earlier also we know that there is a um, vicious cycle of malnutrition which includes uh, as i said earlier it includes undernutrition overnutrition and the micronutrient deficiency and we have heard about this vicious uh, cycle of malnutrition and most critical period is the Uh, from the preconception uh, period to two years, that is, we call it a uh, thousand days, a uh, first thousand days of the um, uh, child, a baby, and uh, also uh, plus preconception um, period. So at that um, in that period, that critical period, we are exposed to it. Even I am um, um, other times also we are exposed to many harmful sub uh, substances. like you, we know that there are so many pathogens in um, poor dietary habits and hygienic practices of uh, and also environmental pollutants it may be the air pollution or the soil pollution or uh, else the water pollution but other way we have um, many um, harmful substances uh, affect our um, uh, life uh, during this period even that antibiotics may be and also different kind of uh, other 
uh, harmful uh, effects, harmful uh, substance. So that uh, from that, during this critical window, if we are uh, taking healthy um, diet and uh, control all the other uh, other um, exposure to other harmful substances, we can have the healthy um, babies, and after that, they will. Um, grow into the uh, uh, adolescence and the adulthood uh, with that, um, uh, with the good health. So uh, we know that when if there's a dietary exposure is poor, poor with the poor diet, dietary exposure during that critical period, um, these children ask, uh, will go as the uh, disease susceptible individuals. And we know that uh, Especially when we have the malnutrition and there's a dysbiosis and uh, enterobacteria and the uh, uh, guts are, are more than the lactobacillus species. So, and uh, uh, our guts are also affected by that, and also our immune system, in, uh, most of the cells are uh, poorly formed and immune, uh, immunity is compromised. And at the same time, other non-communicable non diseases like, such as obesity, diabetes, cancer, and uh, also um, uh, asthma and allergies, uh, and some um, and, uh, inflammatory conditions are caused by the unhealthy uh, early life microbiome. So if we have a healthy early life microbiome that are developed during this critical period, then we are disease resistant and we have the symbiosis that has um, balance between the bacteria and the lactobacillus and the uh, good microbiota. Um, and also we are immune tolerant. And at the same time, we know that during this period, if our uh, pregnant, um, pregnant women is uh, undernourished, or standard one or the um, very thin individual. So they usually give birth to uh, low birth weight babies and these uh, children will go to um, low uh, undernourished, um, go as undernourished children. So that is what we have observed. That is why we have to protect it with the really healthy, balanced diet. When we talk about the balanced diet, and we know that there are food groups which have uh, been identified um, considering the dietary practices from the um, even age, from ancient times up to now, and uh, considering those things, we have identified uh, six food groups for Sri Lankans. Um, um, to take every day, uh, to have the variety, uh, to add the variety to our daily meals. And we need to take them in recommended amounts, and we will talk about it later. And before we are going into that uh, food based diet guidelines or the food groups, we need to uh, just, I wanted to show you what kind of uh, poor dietary habits uh, already identified by um, among Sri Lankans, and usually we um, give the guidance to have at least two fruits a day. But um, during a non-communicable non disease survey was done in 2015 and identified that there are only um, Sri Lankan adults consume fruits four days a week, not on, uh, that is on an average. And I, it's usually um, every day of the week, uh, they do not take the um, um, fruits and that, um, that causes the um, uh, micronutrient deficiency among adult population. So, uh, but on the other hand, more than one fourth of the adults uh, used to open uh, eating eating a processed food, that uh, same uh, survey, non-communicable disease survey 2015, has um, demonstrated the, those results. So, and, and also these 
poor dietary behaviors or the dietary habits leads to um, lead to a poor health outcomes and uh, nearly one fourth of males and one third of females are uh, either overweight or obese or while um, 15.3 percent of the adults are underweight that means uh, nearly approximately 50 percent of the uh, population adult population have um, the malnutrition some kind of undernutrition or the overnutrition so that um, only 50 of close to 50 per, uh, percent of the population are other having the normal uh, nutritional status and because of that we have identified 14 dietary guidelines based on food as i said earlier uh, for healthy adults so these um, guidelines we are going to promote to um, make our community aware and uh, to take the balanced and nutritious healthy diet so our first guideline um, says that add color to your daily meals balancing the correct amount i will explain it later and this next one it eat whole grains and their products including parboiled or less polished rice instead of refined grains and their product. That also has some value. I will explain later because it is also we are going to promote during this um, nutrition month uh, until the next year. So next one is eat at least two vegetables, one green leaf vegetable and two fruits daily. Earlier I said that we have to have uh, two fruits daily, but our Sri Lankan adults have usually only four days on average, four days a week. Um, they have the uh, they have fruits. So um, other thing is add fish or egg or lean meat with pulses in each meal. That also I will explain later because we are going to promote all these four uh, messages in this year. But uh, starting from fifth message, have fresh milk or its fermented milk products. We have to stick to those guidelines, but still we are not going to um, discuss it. Um, we are not going to elaborate it, but I will just go through them. And eat a handful of nuts or oily seeds daily. That we know that nuts and oily seeds, nuts uh, as cashew, and um, oily seeds, uh, cashew, peanuts, and, and things like that, and oily seeds like um, jelly or uh, pumpkin seeds, those things give um, unsaturated fatty acids, which are healthy, heart healthy um, fatty acids. So, because of that, we recommend to eat a handful of nuts and um, limit salt to food and adding salt to food. We know that. Uh, even a non communicable disease survey found that usually Sri Lankans eat um, around 11 grams of um, salt uh, each day on average. A healthy adult, Sri Lankan adults um, have that amount. That is too much for the um, person. I we know that we have to have take five gram of uh, less than five gram, but we uh, take more than double the amount. Then, um, when we talk about the limit sugar drinks, biscuits, cakes, sweets, and sweeteners, we didn't say that to limit sugar itself because we know that in our country, we, have, uh, we observed it uh, in recent times, um, uh, even the, not only adults, but uh, children as well, they uh, used to drink sugar sweetened beverages and uh, carbonated drinks, and also they eat of uh, biscuits, cakes, and sweet. And adults used to uh, take a uh, sweetener. So, uh, because of that, we thought with the uh, that uh, four messages of one to four uh, plus the uh, this eight message, we are going to promote this year altogether five messages. 
other messages like what is the healthiest drink drink eight to ten glasses throughout the day we know that we need to have um, healthy drink uh, healthy drinks but um, uh, what is the best one and uh, um, instead of uh, sugar sweetened beverages uh, we need to take something like coconut juice or some uh, or even we can have some other uh, other healthy uh, drinks um, or we can have a fruit itself to have that um, to hydrate us so uh, we are, uh, next one is to be active engage in moderate physical activity uh, for at least 150 to 300 minutes per week that this is um, this is a uh, who guideline uh, revised in um, uh, physical activity guidelines revised in 2020 they say moderate physical activity for at least 150 to 300 minutes per week for the adult so um, that also we have added to our uh, food based dietary guideline in, even though it is not uh, based on food uh, we have thought of uh, the preventing and controlling the non-communicable disease. At the same time, sleep seven to eight hours continuously every day because that affects your nutrition status. Uh, if you do not have adequate sleep, uh, your nutrition status also affects them. And um, eat clean and safe food. That is that we know that uh, unsafe food causes many diseases. Because of that, we have added that uh, guideline as well. And eat fresh and home cooked food, limit processed and ultra processed food. That is because we know, uh, we know we have to, uh, we we have to um, say um, um, do fresh, um, eat fresh food rather than eating the processed and ultra processed, which are. Un, um, um, unhealthy for us. Uh, we, we can explain it later. Then always read labels of packaged food. We always give because there are front of pack labels in the uh, um, packaged food now and back of pack labels. And we only read um, expiry date, but we know that there are um, traffic light system for the uh, sugar sweetened beverages and also um, the same kind of uh, uh, elaboration for the traffic light system for the package, other packaged food as well. So we just give those things, but we are going to promote only the first two, four, first four messages plus eight messages this year. Otherwise, we know that when we talk about the behavior change, we have a, so like we give a lot of uh, many um, guidelines of the many messages people want to take it. So uh, at least to promote these five messages, we have uh, for the behavior change of uh, the community and uh, in some behavior change of people, we have identified those things. So these are the five messages uh, we are introducing uh, for behavior change communication. As I said that uh, all for first messages and uh, about the limiting sugar sweetened beverages and uh, sweets. So uh, I will explain it later. This, this is the first message which we are going to uh, promote, add color to your daily meals, balancing the correct amounts. And you can see this, there's another message under the, uh, the picture at rainbow colors to give variety to your daily meals. So we can give that to our community because we know that when we say rainbow colors, that different colors uh, it uh, spreads. So, and that gives variety to your daily meals. Because variety is very important uh, to get the adequate amount of nutrients. And these colors, but when we talk about different colors, those different colors means that different vegetables, maybe fruits or other um, foods, but they eat gives uh, different uh, micronutrients, maybe uh, vitamins 
of uh, minerals or sometimes phytochemicals like um, maybe anthocyanin or as, as uh, antioxidant containing thing. Those uh, healthy, uh, healthy non nutritive compounds also we get from those colors. That's why we have added that first add color to your daily meal, then we know that we have to uh, take the variety and um, also the in different colors. And when we say about the variety, we know I said that uh, there are uh, six food groups identified uh, in our battery guidelines for Sri Lankans. And uh, those six food groups uh, can add variety daily or some food uh, if uh, based on their uh, based on the preference uh, can add the variety throughout the week so um, we will discuss that later and we need to other thing what we want to highlight is that we need to take in recommended amounts not whatever we want because we know that in Sri Lanka discussion we take a lot of um, rice and very little um, amounts of vegetables and also um, protein sources of food. So then uh, we won't have the balanced diet. So we will, uh, I will explain it later. And our, uh, so we need to have the recommended amount. Um, then the nutrition value, when we have the variety, we know that not, not only nutrition value is increased, but also our appetite um, will be yeah, increased and improved because uh, when we see a different kind of food, uh, we, if we eat the same kind of food, we won't have the appetite um, to have our meals. So uh, I think I, that is the first uh, message we have to promote. And when we talk about the variety, I said that there are identified food groups uh, according to current practices and also uh, over the years. So first food group, we say whole grains and starchy food. But you can see it in different places, but it is the first food group and we do not have to uh, remember those uh, as, um, as a group, but I will explain why we have put it uh, in different places because when we eat whole grains, we know that rice is our staple food and it is a grain and we have it every day. So it gives us uh, not only energy but also other micronutrients as well. So, but at the same time, that starch food, other starch food also added to our meals like uh, yams, uh, maybe boiled or curried, and also we eat uh, jackfruit, breadfruit, things like that, um, sometimes boiled or uh, curried. But it can be taken uh, based on your uh, pre uh, preference and also uh, to add the variety uh, to our meals. I will explain that uh, later. Um, and uh, also we know the second group is vegetables and green leaves. So uh, that is the second group. First one is whole grains and starch food, then vegetables and green leaves. The third one is pulses, fish, egg, or lean meat. Fourth one is fruits, and fifth one I said that it gives um, healthy fat, that is, uh, those are uh, nuts and oily seeds and oils. And sixth one is fresh milk and it's fermented products. But this one, all uh, so like such food, we can have um, have um, based on other preference and uh, to add the variety to our meals um, throughout the week. Not every day if you want to take it every day weekend, but uh, not um, um, otherwise. Uh, several times a day. So that uh, those are the six food groups which gives variety to um, variety to our diet. Okay. Then um, we will talk about. We I have uh, uh, told you about the recommended amounts. 
when we talk about the recommended amount, there are serving sizes. Or the amount of um, food we can um, serve ourselves. But when we talk about this uh, uh, serving sizes, there's a measure for each and every. Usually we um, take vegetables from, um, um, uh, we serve ourselves with the tablespoon and sometimes cereals and starchy food from the other spoons or the cups. And so we have identified uh, according to the international uh, and um, considering the local practices, uh, some measures. So when we talk about the serving, we measure um, uh, with the teacup, if we take the teacup, that is 200 milliliter uh, cup, which I usually uh, take the uh, usual uh, uh, teacup uh, we use uh, in Sri Lanka, and one um, tablespoon, which is equal to 15 milliliters or the grams, and one uh, uh, teaspoon, five milliliters of grams. And when we talk about the uh, animal sources of proteins, we always measure with the fat who sizes, the who um, boxes of matches. Then one box, match, a match box equals um, four centimeters into three centimeters, that is um, uh, length and the width, and one centimeter high. But when we talk about one serving, when you, we stack two boxes, um, on, um, uh, together, and um, that is the size we uh, take as a serving size. And uh, what is the servings per day? What uh, explain? Because we know that even we uh, measure that with the serving sizes, um, we have to um, divide all the servings throughout the day because we usually take three main meals. Uh, and also sometimes uh, in between snacks. So we, when we say about servings per day, when we ex, uh, when I end that, um, we need to uh, do that for the whole day, this much of amount we can take. Like when uh, we take uh, the cereals and starch food, we can take eight to 13 servings per day. Why there's a range? that the minimum amount is um, identified for uh, the uh, sedentary female adult and maximum is the highly active um, male adult. So uh, that is why we have given the range. So that means that we can have cereals or the starch food, eight to 13 servings. But one serving is equal to half a cup internationally take and that um, identified serving is that. So when we say half a cup and when we say eight to 13, that means four to six and a half cups of cereal and starch food healthy adult can take. That um, female, uh, sedentary female can take four cups of cereals or starch food. That also we have to, when we say as food group, cereals and starch food, but we have to always, if we add um, uh, starch food to our meals or the, our plate, we have to uh, proportionately remove uh, some cereals. So that means that cereals or starch foods, when we take 8 to 13 cups, uh, sorry, uh, 4 to 6.5 cups throughout the day, including snacks. Then when we talk about the vegetables and green leaves, we, uh, this, uh, these guidelines recommend vegetables two to four servings per day for healthy adults. That means we usually serve ourselves with a tablespoon. Uh, that is six tablespoons to 12 tablespoons of vegetables. That is also the range from a sedentary female to highly active male. Then each and every one of us have to take every day three tablespoons of green leaf. Then um, when we talk about the pulses, fish or egg or lean meat, we know that 
Well, we have to add plant proteins um, with the animal proteins. I will um, go into that later. Um, then pulses when we take, we have to take three to five servings. That means um, we take a one serving at the three, uh, at three tablespoons. That means nine to 15 tablespoons, which we do not um, practice usually. Uh, so, uh, and the other thing, uh, animal proteins. When we say, uh, talk about the animal proteins, we say that we have to take two boxes of milk as the size or one um, uh, serving equals to 30 grams. Then when, uh, throughout the day, we have to take um, four boxes of matches because two, two boxes of, uh, of matches size is uh, one serving. And we have to take at least two to four um, uh, such um, boxes of matches size pieces of animal protein. Or we, we can say 60 to 120 grams. And any healthy adult can take one egg a day unless uh, they are um, uh, with uh, our recommendations, doctor's recommendations, others can have the um, eggs uh, uh, throughout the week. So that, uh, that is what I'm um, talking about when we talk about the, uh, those food groups. And when we take about the, uh, two, fruit, um, two fruits a day at the when serving size is one small fruit or the 100 grams and every day we have to have the two to four servings. Um, at least two fruits uh, we have to take them. Then um, when uh, I said that fresh milk and its fermented product, you can take um, based on the preference throughout the week, but we always take a, a cup of milk in the morning most of um, people, but we know that the milk itself, when we say fresh milk, yeah, it is um, rich in satu unhealthy uh, saturated fat. So that is why uh, we have identified a person, adult, healthy adult can have uh, 100 milliliters to 200 milliliters. That means uh, serving is a 200 milliliter cup. But we recommend half to one based on uh, because of the uh, saturated fat. But uh, it, uh, there's calcium deficiency, and uh, when we take the adolescents and also uh, older people, they can have about one uh, cup of uh, to have uh, adequate calcium intake. And uh, we said that there's a message about the healthy. Fats, unsaturated fats, we can have with the one handful of nuts and oily seeds. So, a one a handful is equal to uh, two tablespoons, that one tablespoon, 15 um, gram, and two tablespoons. So, and also oil, we can have one to three based on our activity level and the check there. Um, that is teaspoon, one teaspoon to three teaspoons. These are the measures we have identified. Teacup, you can see that the uh, commonly used um, teacup and one uh, tablespoon, 15 milliliter or the 15 gram, uh, teaspoon is five milliliter or the um, five grams and the standard size of uh, max for uh, usually what we have now uh, in the market. And that is all about when we talk about the variety. So we know that we have to add those variety, um, different kinds, um, um, different food groups into our daily meal. And then we add the variety and also we need to have a colorful meal to have the, all the nutrient and nutrients as well as non-nutritive compounds. Then um, when we talk about the next message, Eat whole grains and their products, including less polished or parboiled rice, instead of refined grains and products. That is, a, uh, I think, it is very long. So we have identified two messages to give to the our public. So eat parboiled or less polished rice instead of refined. 
and consume whole grains and their products. We know that that parboiled or less parboiled rice. When we are uh, parboiled uh, rice, we boil the uh, whole uh, grain and then um, all the uh, all the vitamins and minerals uh, absorb into the uh, into the uh, into the grain and it won't wash out. They are those uh, when we wash our grains, it, it um, vitamins and minerals or the all the other micronutrients to uh, we do not lose them when we parboil it. And at the same time, sometimes people they, they do not like uh, to have a parboiled rice, but um, we have to have the less polished rice with more minerals and. Um, vitamins and uh, also when we prepare uh, string hoppers, maybe you keep it to whatever uh, um, uh, other uh, means. We have to use whole grains as much as possible to have more vitamins and minerals. Whatever we do, as I said earlier, we need to always into the recommended amounts. That is uh, servings per day. Uh, when we take the whole grains or the um, rice or any starch food, we have to take uh, four to six and a half cups a day, uh, um, uh, daily, and uh, not more than that, depending on our uh, physical activity level and the um, gender. So um, then when we talk about the uh, starch food, also the same amounts, and we, I said that earlier. So if we take with the cereals, we always have to think about how many, um, how many servings we have take, um, we have divided throughout the um, throughout the day. And also, if in a meal we take, we can replace some grains with this uh, starchy food uh, based on our prefer uh, preference. And Third, uh, third uh, message is eat at least two vegetables, one green leaf vegetable and two fruits daily. And we, um, uh, in, uh, we can say eat at least five varieties of vegetables and fruits daily. That means two vegetables, one green leaf vegetable and two fruits. Those are five varieties. So, and also we can say uh, with the serving sizes, eat six tablespoons from two different vegetables, three tablespoons uh, from green leaf vegetables and two fruits day. So when we say two different vegetables, if we can eat more, we can eat because it doesn't give an, um, any other energy or energy, only the micronutrients. So at least we have to have two different uh, vegetables. And they give vitamins, minerals, and also uh, many healthy um, phytochemicals like carotene, maybe anthocyanin, and other antioxidants, there, as well as fiber. So, when we take more vegetables and uh, the vegetables, green leaves and uh, fruit, it adds a variety to um, our meals and also uh, different micronutrients as well. Uh, different nutrients so, uh, and also non nutritive compounds such as phytochemicals, which are uh, which give the healthy uh, um, health benefits. So, this shows that how much we have to take um, from two vegetables six tablespoons, green leaves um, three tablespoons, and two fruits that equal for the uh, usually approximately. Uh, approximates the 400 grams of vegetables, green leaves, and fruits uh, intake daily. So when we say about the um, different colors, we know that in Sri Lanka, we are very fortunate to have a different kind of uh, vegetables as well as uh, fruits, and uh, we are better. Nature gives us the things, but do we use those um, vegetables and 
vegetables and fruits, especially seasonal ones, and also locally available, low cost uh, fruits and uh, vegetables, fruits and green leaves. We, we need to promote those things because not necessary to have the same kind of uh, that uh, up country vegetables and, and things like that, but uh, we can add many uh, locally available fruits and vegetables to our uh, meals to add the variety and give the color to me. So that is, uh, we talk about the uh, three messages and fourth message, um, fourth message is, the yeah, fourth message is eat fish or egg or lean meat with pulses at every meal. You may think about why it is with pulses. We know that usually fish gives us healthy fat as well, except for um, proteins and eggs also give different nutrients. But meat, we know that there's a, there are uh, effects uh, on uh, heart sometimes because they are rich in high, uh, saturated fat and, uh, and um, and also, when we rear the uh, animals, that our environment also uh, affected with the methane gas and things like that. So, uh, uh, global warming causes uh, uh, with that. So, this time, when we uh, revised our food based dietary guidelines, we uh, considered the sustainable, environmentally sustainable diet as well and also considering some health effects, we thought that we need to add, and uh, many, many experts uh, uh, agreed to add pulses or the plant proteins to every meal with animal proteins. And we know that animal proteins are quality proteins than um, when we say the plant proteins because uh, they have all the uh, essential amino acids and uh, at the same time, uh, have the um, bi high bioavailability. But we know that when we take pulses um, with uh, uh, grains, it adds all the amino acids because uh, pulses uh, miss one or two um, essential amino acids. When we take it with the grain, we um, Grains also add um, uh, some proteins and amino acids, and we get all the uh, necessary um, uh, essential amino acids. And when we take, when we take uh, with the um, um, uh, cereals or the grains, um, it improves the bioavailability. And when we take the um, pulses, we can terminate them. Kalakarapu uh, pulses, Kalakarapu kadala mungata, like germinate them and they uh, will increase the bio, uh, availability of nutrients. So, uh, when we promote that, we can think, eat three tablespoons of pulses, such as dal, chickpeas, green grams, soya in each meal. That is one message. And also, Healthy adults can consume one egg daily, and we can promote also healthy fish, especially small um, oily fish and small fish. We have to promote. The next uh, one we do not promote. We ask them to next message in next message. We ask to limit as much as possible all the sugary drinks, biscuits, cake. Sweet and sweetness to uh, prevent and control the non communicable diseases. So, for that message, we have identified two operational messages to give uh, uh, to the, uh, uh, promote the public that is, limit adding sugar to food and beverages. And instead of that, you can enjoy the natural taste. And we know that. Uh, Consumption of sugar should be limited to six teaspoons daily. That includes all the hidden uh, sugars as well, from maybe 
fruit juices uh, and also sweet other sweets and plus added sugar into our uh, beverages. So we know that sugar is addictive. It is usually addict, uh, more addictive than smoking and smoking. And we know that it gives empty calories. That means that it um, sugar gives only energy, but not nutrients, other nutrients like uh, micronutrients. So it also causes non-communicable diseases. And we know that obesity um, and uh, like uh, non uh, and other non-communicable diseases, but um, uh, we do not get any other nutrients from the uh, sugar or the sugar sweetened beverages, beverages and food. So sorry. <coughs> this is the model food plate um, introduced by Sri Lankans. I think you have seen earlier one also. This is also the uh, more or less the same, but uh, we uh, you can see that. Um, nearly half of the uh, plate, half of the plate is um, uh, you take carbohydrates, that means from the grains and uh, other starchy food, or maybe that boiled or curried um, yams or some, um, or jackfruit, red fruit, uh, things like that. And also pulses give some uh, amount of carbohydrates. So, then you get about half of the plate, uh, you are getting energy from the carbohydrate. And uh, if we take the other half uh, and you divide it into three parts, and two thirds are uh, from the two, at least two vegetables and grain leaves, you have to fill. But um, remember that we have to. Into the those recommended amounts of food, and the from the other half, um, left, uh, there's a one uh, third left, and that is um, that should be filled with uh, animal and plant protein. So, uh, apart from that, we can have fruit. We can have fruits not only after not only after meals as a snack. If we in between we need to have, it's better to have a, as a snack. And also we need to take water. Um, even though we do not promote, we have to take from water. And when we say about the snacks, we can promote nuts, oily seeds, uh, uh, nuts and oily seeds as a healthy snack or curd or yogurt uh, if uh, preferred um, they can have as a snack. So when we talk about these things, when we promote these things, we have to make um, uh, um, ask uh, the public to make a healthy shift. So from refined grains and uh, products to whole grains and products and also fruit nectars maybe or, or the Sugar sweetened beverages, which we um, uh, is uh, uh, in and uh, these days in Sri Lanka, so we they can have a, um, instead of those things a whole fruit, which gives more um, fiber, uh, not only uh, micronutrients but also fiber as well. So, but um, from we need to shift from milk powders to fresh milk, fresh liquid milk or its fermented products that you know, we can have a healthy uh, diet, a healthy balanced diet. And also we need to um, practice as much as possible, uh, to, uh, avoid as much as possible hidden saturated fat and trans fats, which are uh, we get easily from our um, baker products. So, because uh, the baker products are exposed to high temperature, that uh, um, yeah, saturated fats in um, bakery products are exposed to high temperatures, or uh, then we get the uh, 
trans fat uh, formation in those things and also they are uh, rich in saturated fat. So instead of that, we can have healthy snacks with less fat, salt and sugar, uh, especially that uh, healthy fats like nuts and oily seeds make a way we may take and also fruits. We know that fruits um, have um, less uh, sodium but um, high potassium, which, uh, which is healthy. So uh, we can have uh, as a snack. And also, um, like uh, from uh, ultra processed fruit food to uh, the home cooked or the uh, home cooked fresh meals uh, processed with the current ingredients, we have to shift. Those, uh, when we talk about the ultra processed food, ultra processed food ha uh, has uh, usually uh, more additives, and maybe preservatives and color, um, coloring agents, and also um, those uh, ingredients, chemicals, which are not used in, the, uh, in our kitchens. So those are the ultra processed food that we have to, because they are given many, um, uh, many uh, adverse health effects. So we need to have the products um, rich with, uh, we need to have the home cooked meals, which are minimally processed or processed with culinary. That is what we need to uh, shift to and uh, uh, promote our public to uh, have the healthy diet. And that is the nutrition for protection from um, not only from the infections, but also uh, from uh, non communicable diseases as well as from malnutrition. Um, and we know that healthy dietary habits ensure happiness and long life. That is what we have to promote. Thank you. Any questions I can answer? I have finished that. Uh, someone has asked uh, the copy of the presentation. I can give that. I will uh, give it to uh, Dr. Irandi. Then she can. Uh, she has this uh, presentation. She can share it with her. Uh, can a person consume two eggs daily? If you, you are a um, healthy one, yes, you can. Then anything else? Uh, uh, about uh, asking? Updated version because it's in the uh, still we have um, we did uh, in the final stages of updating, uh, so we will um, um, upload it in, uh, to the our website. After that, the um, food based dietary guideline whole thing. Anything uh, else? Uh, yeah. there, uh, one uh, question was, ma'am, uh, how much will this diet cost for a cost, family of four? Actually, uh, cost uh, that uh, depending on the, uh, we know that for daily um, changing prices and the inflation, we can't do that. But uh, at, um, uh, at this time, um, we are in the process of, um, uh, in our unit, uh, in the process of uh, costing the diet. But that is every day with the ever change, changing uh, prices, uh, it's very difficult to say, but that depends on price, depends on what you select. And if you select the low cost, uh, uh, low cost, uh, vegetables and uh, um, fruits uh, available in the market you can take but only thing you know that pulses and uh, protein uh, sources of food and also at uh, these days rice are very uh, uh, costly expensive so I, we can't calculate at this time but uh, we have the uh, we have we are trying to do the uh, costing of the diet, but uh, exact price we can't say at this moment. Um, Hope I have answered because you all know about this. 
um, because costing of diet is a um, different kind of thing, but we are doing it now, um, at this moment. Uh, one more question, when I'm, uh, this yeah. is from me actually. Uh, yeah. As family physicians, general practitioners, yes. uh, we are, uh, we are uh, supposed to answer this uh, uh, sort of uh, these uh, parents uh, with their pediatric nutrition of their children of uh, under five years. Yes. Uh, maybe under five years, maybe uh, more uh, older children. So, uh, what the, the Sri Lankan community has many food taboos, madam. Yes. Uh, so, if we uh, now say when you say lean meat, if yeah. we were supposed to introduce them uh, uh, any meat other than chicken, uh, yes. beef, or pork, it's going to be a bit difficult because it's. Uh, 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 they are, it's confronting their beliefs actually. Yeah. So, what is your opinion on this, madam? Uh, yeah. uh, out of these beliefs, what is the science and the, what is the recommendation that you can make right yeah. now? Um, that you know that uh, red meat, once yes. we have more saturated fat, but it has um, it's good for the anemic people. But when we say that you have to have the lean meat, we need to ask them to remove all fat, visible fat at least. Then we remove uh, uh, most of the most, uh, part of their uh, saturated fat. You know, that uh, we, they can have uh, uh, cow fat, they can have it. Uh, but uh, chicken uh, also, sometimes people have issues with the that estrogen uh, available. Um, that are high concentrate of estrogen and other um, uh, chemicals, but um, um, some samples we take at, at the Ministry of Health, they say that they didn't find uh, um, any kind of uh, adver um, unhealthy or the harmful substances or the harmful uh, hormones or the, any other chemicals in uh, chicken. But uh, for, goes with me, we have to tell them they can have, but only, and, and also when we say about the variety, it is better to promote um, fish. If they need to take uh, take um, animal sources of protein, better to have um, um, for children especially, fish and eggs, which are rich in, um, uh, eggs are rich in all the, uh, uh, almost all the nutrients and also um, fish with the healthy fat. But uh, you know that uh, when we say about the uh, meat, we have we can ask them to take a one, um, one or two, uh, not, uh, several times a week, not every day. It's better to anyway pro uh, promote fish and eggs. Yeah. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I think uh, the question uh, we have answered on the chat also, and then, uh, the questions we have received also we have asked. I think yeah. uh, we have uh, run out of time also, ma'am. So I think uh, we have to be very uh, grateful to Dr. Anuma Basnaik, consultant, community physician, uh, sacrificing his uh, Sunday uh, to uh, <clears throat> give us a splendid lecture on nutrition. It was updated and a practical one, actually. So we learned a lot uh, from it, ma'am. Thank you very much. So on behalf of College of Jetra Practitioners, we thank, you. we thank you for uh, uh, conducting this lecture. And we hope uh, that you will uh, uh, continue to support us in uh, uh, our CPDs in the days to come. And I take this opportunity to thank everyone who sacrificed a Sunday evening to join in this lecture. So let us uh, meet in a similar lecture again. Until then, good evening and stay safe. Okay, good evening. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank uh, College of General Practitioners to give us uh, this opportunity to promote these things because anyway we need to promote it uh, in our community, in the public. So I think you are one of the best uh, 
uh, college to promote that because we always uh, meet uh, um, people as a first contact. So I think uh, you can uh, help us also to promote these uh, messages. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you again, madam. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. Good evening.